Mikhail Buga Giersdorf has become a household name. The 16 year old kid who won $3 million from a single Fortnite tournament. You may already know part of his story, but this is the untold story. How did a seemingly unknown pro go on to win one of the biggest esports tournaments in the world? And what has he done since winning the World Cup? While the wider audience may not have heard of Booger heading into the World Cup, he was by no means a stranger to the pro scene. Despite only being 16 at the time of the World Cup, Booger had been heavily involved in the NA East practice scene since the very beginning. Four left. Guys, left. Dragging out. Okay, I'm with you, I'm with you, with you. I'm holding his other arm. I've hyped so. Dark time. I'm going to go dead, alright. Yeah, oh, master, master. I got a kill. Got another kill. Got another? No. Nice. Nice. Before FNCS, cash cups, or even custom lobbies, the best of the best duped it out in games ran by private discords or even just readied up into public matches hoping to face off against each other. During these humble beginnings, Kyle was not Sentinel's Booga, the World Cup champion. He was TTV Booga, a 15-year-old kid taking on the likes of TSM Hamlins in a build battle in a public match streaming to just a handful of viewers. These early days of competitive Fortnite are the dark ages of the esports history. Very little is known or recorded from them. There are hidden treasures to be found on the depths of YouTube though. One such gem is Booga competing alongside Aspect, Animal and Kuros in the Architect Pop-Up Cup in February of 2019, one of the very first online tournaments to ever exist. Sadly, Fortnite's early days in online tournaments were less than ideal. <laughs> what is happening? I had the opportunity to sit down and have a chat with Kuros, Booga's first proper teammate who competed alongside him heading into the World Cup. Even from the very beginning, he knew how special Booga was as a player. Like yeah, back then, he, okay. he, he could just like take over the lobby. It was with the introduction of the Blackheart and Scallywag Cup in March of 2019 that Booga would get his first opportunity to showcase his skill and start to make a name for himself, placing first in the Blackheart Cup solo qualifier and 19th in the Scallywag Cup's duo qualifier alongside Kuros. These were some of the first few tournaments that were completely online and boasted pretty massive prize pools, and Booga was already at the top. While these early performances were incredibly important for building your name as a pro player, absolutely nothing could prepare Fortnite for what was coming next. The Fortnite World Cup. This was to be one of the biggest tournaments in esports history, not just Fortnite. Online qualifiers open to absolutely anybody with the chance to compete for a share of a $100 million prize pool. This was an unbelievable amount of pressure, especially for those within the scene with a history of being the best. Sadly, many of the biggest names in the world struggled to handle the pressure. I am so bad at it. And of course I'm getting focused. I have two matches, dude, and I need 12 points, and I can't do it. I got, I just got, I literally just placed 26. I didn't get in. Oh, no, bro. No way. No, no, no. I, I'm going to break something. What? Not Booga though, he exploded out of the gates, placing first in the very first week of the NA East World Cup solo qualifiers, booking his ticket to New York City and a guaranteed $50,000.
Despite this phenomenal beginning, Booger's dominance would slow down slightly, still placing very highly with a 17th, 19th, 60th, and 25th in the following weeks. Other players like Dubs and Clicks, who managed to qualify in almost every single week of solos, would begin to become fan favorites heading into the World Cup Finals. In hindsight, a top-tier mechanical player who managed to place first in Week 1 qualifiers should have been a favorite to take home the crown, but very few people predicted Booger to walk away victorious. You have to remember, World Cup was Booger's first major LAN event. He was too young to compete in the original skirmishes and major events before the age restriction was lifted from 16 to 13. Many thought he would crumble under the pressure and veterans such as Tifu and Bizzle would have the advantage. To top it all off, Booger did not even have a confirmed drop spot until the morning of the World Cup. Karos recalled talking to Booger leading up to the finals about how he was torn between landing a safer drop, playing for the ballers and superior mobility, and not risk the early engagement or go his home of lucky landing. But this was Booger, the young mechanical god that could take over any lobby and dominate any opponent in a 1v1. He was not about to take the safe route. He was not about to go out and win the World Cup. He was going to dominate it. Booger won the World Cup solos on 59 points, almost double the points of Sam in second on 33. This will go down as one of the most dominant performances, not just in Fortnite history, but all of esports. Against 99 of the best players in the entire world, where anyone was given the chance to compete, Kyle Booger Gizdorf stood head and shoulders above the rest. Booger is now a household name, someone your parents have even heard about. The 16-year-old kid who won $3 million playing video games. But he started just like you, with a dream, to become the very best at the game he loved. He was driven and committed, putting in thousands upon thousands of hours, practicing and developing his skills to one day stand atop his throne as the Fortnite World Champion. Immediately after winning World Cup, Booger's life completely changed forever. From featuring on talk shows with Jimmy Fallon, appearing on almost every breakfast show in America, and even appearing in an ad during the Super Bowl. Bananas. His social growth was almost unheard of, skyrocketing from 29,000 subscribers on YouTube in the month of July to over 1 million only two months later in September. His first video on the channel after the tournament, I won the Fortnite World Cup $3 million, now sits at over 25 million views. But where is Booger now? Coming off such a dominant performance, all eyes were on Booger for how long he could maintain his position at the top. However, due to the nature of Fortnite as an esport, this is incredibly difficult. Tournaments shifted from major solo and duos tournaments to mostly trio events with the introduction of Season X Trio FNCS. Booger had proven himself as the best solo player in the world, but had yet to do so in team-based game modes. A very unfortunate placement of 26th in the Grand Finals of Season X Trios would be Booger's worst major placement in his career, and was an unfortunate blow to his legacy coming out of the World Cup. Following this up with a 21st in Chapter 2 Season 1 Squad FNCS just one season later, did little to defend his previous season's performance. He did, however, back this up with a very strong fifth place in duo FNCS alongside Stretch, and things were looking up for the world champ, especially with solo FNCS Invitationals, the first major solo event on the horizon to defend his crown. Sadly, a 40th place and $600 was not the result Booger or many of his fans had hoped for. Many started talking of Booger being washed, and even trying to argue he somehow got lucky at Worlds. This would not last long though, due to an extremely dominant performance in Chapter 2 Season 3 solo FNCS placing 4th and walking away with $25,000. For many fans, the question still remain though. Could Booger crack the code and perform in team game modes? Karoz in our interview discussed how Booger's biggest weakness as a player early on was his tendency to make solo plays. 
This is the case for many younger mechanical players. In solos, they rely on their confidence and fighting ability to overpower their opponents and turn the tides of a fight. In team game modes, this is far more difficult. Coordination and communication reign supreme, especially in trios and squads. Booga needed to prove he had matured as a player. It was now October 2020 when Chapter 2 Season 4 Trio FNCS started, over a year since he had won World Cup. It was starting to feel like now or never for Booga to step up to the plate and prove his ability to play as part of a team. Placing 2nd in Week 1, 2nd in Week 2, 4th in Week 3, 1st in Heats, and 3rd in Grand Finals, Booga was most definitely able to do this, becoming one of the most consistent teams in the world this season. This was said to be the beginning of Booga's rise back to the top as one of the world's best players. Now having performed so highly in a major team-based FNCS, everything seems set for Booga, Jampa, and Avery to dominate the next season's trio FNCS as well. Sadly, a theme that has plagued Booga's career for many seasons would raise its head again. The Snakenings. One main criticism of Booga many players and fans hold against him is his lack of loyalty to remaining with a team despite incredibly high placements. The amount of times Avery and Jampa have been dropped and picked up by Booga is too many to count. A lot of you will take that as me criticizing Booga. It is true, some teams such as Scented, Edgy, and Commandment have reaped the rewards of sticking together season after season and building on dominant performances, but that is just not the case for the majority of teams and players within competitive Fortnite. Many of the world's best players such as Taysen have also built up a reputation for splitting with teams despite phenomenal placements. He has however spoken on his reasoning for this, stating that once you become too comfortable with your teammates and become friends before teammates, then your drive to succeed and accountability to one another diminishes. You have to remember, this is a job. These players are esports athletes. A lot of times these players being dropped could be handled better, but at the end of the day, these players are doing what they believe to be best for their career and their placements. Whatever your stance on the debate, sadly Booga's decision to split with Jamper and Avery and instead play with Bizzle and Clicks led to mixed results. Kicking off their run together, placing first in semi-finals and fifth in grand finals of their first FNCS together, many doubters were silenced. Sadly, this streak did not continue, and Booga would face his worst placement in his career not even making grand finals of the next FNCS for the first time ever. The whispers of Washed began to emerge yet again surrounding Booga. Despite some phenomenal performances, Booga having no FNCS title under his belt kept him out of many people's discussion for the best player in the world. It had now been almost two years since the World Cup and many people no longer held the title of World Cup champion as highly. The next season, Booga would team up once again with Avery, but instead replace Jampa with Nosh, an incredibly mechanical fighter known for his flashy mechanics. This led to a solid performance, finishing 8th in the Grand Finals, but was still far from the first place finish Booga was grinding for. With the final trio FNCS and Grand Royale on the horizon, this was Booga's last chance to make a statement to close out 2021. With only one teammate in Miro and less than a week until qualifiers began, things were not looking good for Booga. However, in a decision that confused many, Booga did something he had never done in his career. He gave a chance to a teammate many thought beneath his skill level, Muzz. The OCE import, who sadly did not even make grand finals the season before and had yet to prove himself outside of OCE. This decision proved to be one of the best in his career and proved many of the doubters wrong. Booga, Miro, and Muzz went on to win Booga's first FNCS crown and Miro and Muzz's third. Oh my God, we won! Let's go! With Grand Royale, the biggest tournament of 2021 just around the corner in less than two weeks and coming off the back of their insane first place, the community was sure this time Booga would stick with his team and not make the same mistakes of the past. They were wrong. Deciding to drop Muzz in a move that upset and confused many in the community and deciding to play with Dukes, the winner of FNCS Season 7. The only way for Booga to prove his decision was the right one was to do what many thought impossible, winning back-to-back -back major tournaments less than two weeks apart. And that is exactly what he did. I'll do anything if we just won. Bro. Sweet. Jamper ended 472, Acorn ended... I... Wait. Wait. 
We did, bro. Let's go, baby. Let's go, baby. Booga had done it. He had defended his legacy and catapulted himself back into the ranks of the best players in the world, closing out 2021 with back-to-back -back major FNCS titles. Many are still upset with Booga for his handling of the situation, but it is the reality of Fortnite esports. In open format tournaments where anyone can jump on their PC and compete, teams do not last long and results are held above all else. These are professionals doing what they can to secure the title. This is the untold story of Kyle Booga Giersdorf, an unknown kid with a dream to become the best. Following his passion to the very top and despite a bumpy journey, finding himself there once again.